When you are dressing modest and you're dressing with a covering over your body, it allows for other parts of you to shine. Mm. It takes away, you know, um, the main attraction. It takes away your body being the focus. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, your vocabulary, like there's so many things that a, woman, a man, and I, I don't want to be objectified. I don't want a man looking at me like, women know what's going to get the men, right? We know men don't always care about the quality of a woman. Men don't always care about our success if we got degrees. We know if we lonely and we we want to feel like we the baddest girl walking, let me put on a tight dress, you know, and especially if you're in college, you know. And then when you're in college, you care about followers and you care about likes. So then you get these, you know, that's when the poses come in. That's when you start presenting yourself online in a, in a dishonorable way. Um, and back to what I'm saying is, I did get men and I actually um, got, I got what I wanted from that loneliness, from that desperateness. I got a man, but it wasn't a quality man. Is provocative dressing a disservice to God? What about yourself? Does dressing provocative attract the wrong kind of man? We're going to talk about that. Is it disrespectful to your relationship if you are in a relationship? This and so much more in this segment of It's Scary to Mary. What's up, Brave Arts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre-engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Mary, wanting you to love fearlessly. We have a returning guest. She is a Harrisburg, PA native who ventured onto Old Dominion University, where she earned her bachelor's of, fi uh, bachelor's of finance degree. She is currently an accountant and aspires to enter the legal field in the near future. She loves God. I love God too. Amen. <laughs> Above <laughs> all else and enjoys prioritizing her faith, purpose, and loved ones simultaneously. Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Imani Clemens. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing wonderful. I'm so glad to be returning. Um, our first session, I believe, was about, you know, children and um, the division of their parents and all the drama that could cause in, in their lives. And I'm happy to, um, I know that we discussed previously that I will be coming back and we just, I feel like we spoke that into existence. So I'm glad to be back. <laughs> yes, for sure. This topic, I seen this real quick, Bravehearts. I seen her post, uh, it was in her stories and it was the dangers of provocative dressing and the masculine energy it creates for women. I said, I got to share this. <laughs> we got to talk about this in detail because she talked yes. about it a little bit. She got a couple of snippets and uh, commentary, but we got to talk about this in detail. So I want to jump into this topic of dangers of provocative dressing. Uh, you had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There were seven different things that you addressed. So let's break these things down. The first one is it's a, dis a dishonor to God and a disservice to yourself. Let's talk about that. Yes, um, this is my this is my green light go moment. <laughs> this is the green light go moment. The floor is yours. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I definitely the reason why I put it's a dishonor um, to God and a disservice to yourself first is because I believe that is honestly the most important. All of the other ones are equally important, but I really believe, um, you know, of course, when you when a person says that they keep God first in their life, um, a part of that is pleasing God. And the way that provocative dressing displeases God is because, of course, your body um, is not meant to be uncovered for the world to see. Um, I believe the only person that should be seeing your body is yourself and your spouse. So um, I'll go on to that other part of, you know, the disrespect, you know, towards the spouse thing. But um, the reason why I put to yourself is because, you know, the way you present yourself to the world matters, um, you know, and it's doing a disservice to yourself because, it's going to go on to discuss, um, you know, mention all of the other dangers that we'll be talking about tonight. Mm -hmm. And um, the way that it's a disservice is because um, you'll just be, you'll just be placed in a certain category, you know, like you, it's a way for you to get labels. Um, and, you know, I have to say, like, we don't see Michelle Obama out here dressing like a stripper, right? 
we don't see Michelle Obama out here, you know, in her bathing suit. I think if I were to see Michelle Obama at the beach, she probably has a one piece on and like a cover up. So it's a certain standard um, that we should have for ourselves and the clothing that we choose to wear. And the way that it dishonors God, I think is just plain and simple, right? Um, he wants us to honor our bodies. Our bodies are the temple. So the way that we present ourselves to the world, um, it's, it's a way that we can honor God and we should do it in a way that honors God. Amen. Are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video and it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. The second piece you have is this woman may carry a desperate aura that man can sense, making her appear less confident and less desirable. Now that's that's a that's a tough one. So yes, let's talk about that. Yes. So this 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 point right here is honestly where the the title came from. Um, I never knew that provocative dressing really gives off that masculine energy. Um, I watched a guy, um, I, well, he's a man and I've, I've been watching him, I wanna say probably two plus years, three years. Um, and his name is R.C. Blakes. And- um, <laughs> Not the R.C. Blakes. Yes, um, I'm the kind of person where, you know, uh, I know, and I'm sure a lot of us know that there's so many podcasts out here, is so many um, ideas, opinions. I like to listen to one voice, you know. If it's not God, I'm selecting another person that I trust and that I'll take their wise counsel. So R.C. Blake says, you know, um, he's a pastor, you know, in a different state. I'm not there, but I do watch him online faithfully mm -hmm. every time he drops a new video. So he posted a video and he said, desperate dressing, um, and I forget what the title was, but he mentioned in his video that provocative dressing and being promiscuous is masculine. He said, you're turning into a hunter. Um, he said that you, you know, you subconsciously have this mindset of um, being desperate. And, I, and I, the reason why it clicked for me is because I, I made two categories. I made a category of a woman wearing a tight dress mm -hmm. and a woman wearing a flowy dress. And both of the those women can get hollered at, but the woman with the flowy dress, she's probably in a more like, you know, like, yes, she's probably beautiful. She did her makeup, you know, um, everything's on point, hair, nails, toes, everything. But she doesn't have to come across as like a snack or a meal, right? The other woman has to, and she may not, you know, intentionally be doing it, but if she has her boobs all out, you know, the dress is too tight. Um, she, you know, even her posing in her pictures, if she has to bend over, um, turn around, right. To show something, it's a lot more energy, right. That a woman has, you, you've noticed that, um, that women that dress provocatively, they put a lot more energy into their appearance. Um, whereas a woman, you know, you look at those pictures on Instagram and it's probably a woman in like those, you know, flowy sundresses and she's at the flower garden, right? She's not going to the club. So 
desperate, you know, what's our intentions, right? When ladies go out to the club, we're like, I'm trying to get a man with money tonight, or I'm trying to, you know, um, who's looking, you know, they might be wanting to be intimate that night. Mm -hmm. So they're probably going out and like, all right, let me get all sexy. Let me look appealing. So that way I can attract that. Mm -hmm. So you then go into something and it, you know, you're intentional, but you're intentional in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Um, and your intention is desperation. So there's good intentions and there's bad intentions. Mm -hmm. Um, so yes, it's just the, and then the less desirable part that I want to mention is, um, a man can sense thirst, right? A man can sense, you know, how they say, right? The woman is not supposed to pursue. We got a lot of this thing going on, you know, where women are bowing down and proposing to men. That's another like desperate energy. And I think I can even look at a picture and see a, a woman proposing to a man. And I can, I feel desperate energy from that picture. Like there's a certain aura that when you feel that you have to, go outside of your means outside of um who you are and who you know yourself to be mm -hmm. that you have to like make up for something mm -hmm. and that's what the um provocative dressing does to a woman mm -hmm. yeah because <clears throat> and, and i know i catch a lot of flack for this but i'm, I'm gonna say it anyway when i met my wife we met on instagram for those who you know we met on instagram and uh we married six months after we met one thing I did though was when I first liked one of her pictures, I mm -hmm. scrolled down to see. I was like, "Oh, okay." I my heart was racing because I'm like, I like her. She's cute. I like these pictures. But as I'm scrolling, I'm thinking, now it's easy. It's easy to be like you're being judgmental because I know in the comments, hear me out. I was waiting for the 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 picture with the booty on the sink or, you know, I was waiting for some, you know, I was waiting for one because I was like, I uh, I know. You knew it was coming. I yep. knew it was coming. I was just like, uh, and would that might have changed the way I thought about her? Eh, maybe to a degree because I'm like, you put this picture out there because I'm like, mm -hmm. I know men, right? Man, you can, you can just show a, a little bit of thigh and there's 40, 50 men in your DMs. Mm -hmm. you know so if you got the booty hanging out i only can imagine yeah. so yeah. the beautiful thing was she didn't have any of those pictures i was like praise glory the right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that really unfortunately it really helped me to make the decision to pursue further in the way i saw her mm -hmm. because all her pictures were classy she was with her son mm -hmm. or she was hanging out you know doing stuff like that but anything else was everything else was just just straight up classy just her out and about in her business and that yeah. gave me the green light to be like okay i want to know her I, I i had more of a respect for her honestly mm -hmm. if if she had a bunch of provocative pictures uh you know, sexy and stuff. Now I get it. People are grown. I understand. People are gonna do what they do. Mm -hmm. But I was looking to remarry, and I had a, a a standard, just like everyone else had. Right, and and you make a good point. Like I like when you talk because then I remember what I really want to say. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so I think the struggle for women is wanting to feel sexy, mm -hmm. but not wanting to, uh be like hey look here's me hmm. like you know it's it's a medium um and i'm not saying that all women that have a tight dress on are desperate right. um i i think just as women we want to feel sexy because that's i wouldn't say that's our job or role but like even our men they i think they require us to be like hey just look good for me and that's all you gotta do right so mm -hmm. we feel like that's the least we can do um and it's that balance of being sexy, but also being covered. Um, you know, like, you know, some women they'll have a little cleavage out or they'll, yeah. but I think it all comes in with, you know, knowing yourself as a woman, loving your body, because knowing like your size of the dress that you should wear. Um, and I, and it brings up another point. Um, there's this one dress. I don't think it's, I know bodycon is a dress. But it's like this one, what is it, cat? It's not a cat suit. Oh, my goodness. I, I knew I didn't want to ever wear it. I was just like, it, it honestly it looks like, you know, you will go on a strip club and it looks like it looks like a prostitute will wear it. Mm -hmm. um, 
look at that thumbs up, but um, it looks like a prostitute will wear it. And, you know, it's not to say that it's not to say that these women are low value who dress like this. It's just we're talking tonight about the dangers. Right. Yeah. Um, and especially for women who want to be a wife, you know, like we you know, you the thing don't allow social media to suck you into the IG baddie because. I, I'm going to be honest. I was never like always, like I knew this stuff. I, w- I feel like I was always a wise person, but like if you allow social media to um, influence you in your life, mm-hmm. you have to know, like, these are people that are getting paid. You know, they might have their website that they use. These, these are people that, you know, they get paid to post these pictures. This is their life. This is their income. You, on the other hand, you want to, you want to be, you know, stellar in your career. You want a husband you want to be a wife, you want to be a mom, um, you know, employers nowadays can look at your social media. So it's so much that goes into it. Um, and you have to know what lifestyle you want to live. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and once you have that focus of like, I want to be a, I want to be a wife. Will my husband, like, am I attracting a husband looking like this? Yes, I look sexy, but I'm going to be attracting a lot more men that want a one night stand than a husband. So knowing your lifestyle, knowing what you want out of your life is going to help you with your dressing. Mm -hmm. And just like how you, you know, you found your wife because I'm not sure if she was in, you know, wanted her husband at the time, but she may have been intentional at the time as well. Like, let me present myself well. And of course we know men, you know, we, people do find their husbands and wives through social media. So you know, like you got to bring your A game on social media because who knows if you would have saw that post, you might have canceled her out. Yep. So <laughs> yep. easy. Yeah. And I was just being honest. You know, it's one of those yeah. things. And maybe I wouldn't have even canceled her, canceled her out. And, right. and granted, I love the Lord. I sold it out for Christ. I understand. As a man, though, just in my primal state. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna look at you different. I'm gonna be like, oh, she cool, but I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see what's what's up with that. I'm gonna see what right. we can do a little later. Because in a man's mind, we're thinking like that, like, oh, I'm trying to get me a man, and the men play the game with you. Okay, right. Well, you looking like that. Well, I wanna right. see what I can do with you. And then a, a lot of women are lonely too. Like, you know, like you like. We have this thing, right? I, I, I'll be honest. I used to, I used to be pretty like well known. I think I still am, but you know, I'm older now. Oh yeah, yeah. I I mean, yeah. yeah, I think. I mean, and I, I don't say it like an ex. You know how like when you're a teenager, you want to be like popular and stuff. Now it's like, okay, I'm well known. And yes, you know, money, you know, monetization, right? Social media, it pays to be popular now. But I, I say, I mentioned that to say that I, um. I had to tell myself, no, Imani, even though people know you and you could probably get more popularity if you just follow the world, but you're not, you're set apart, you know, back to honoring God, you know, like you not about to be an IG baddie. That's not for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you're not taking no bathing suit pics, you know, summer's coming up. You don't go buy a bikini and post on the yacht. That's not what you're going to be doing. So I just had to mention that, like, it's it's so much more to it, but it's it's um it's healing inside. You know, I think you have to heal inside to not give off that desperate energy and know that if I'm just a good person inside and I upkeep myself, a good man's gonna come. Mm-hmm. So. Love that. I want to get back into the <laughs> questions, but I I knew we was gonna get off track. But it's yep. okay, this is good, right? Because mm-hmm. I was gonna ask you: Was there ever a time in your life where you maybe went off on the the provocative end because you know maybe maybe you did want some attention or maybe you know you started to fill out or whatever you know what i'm saying so was there ever a time and then if so when was the switch and and how did that work for you yes i'm i'm really glad you asked me this question um and it's really a good question and i say i'm thankful for that because i don't want to be on here like you know, with a ruler and saying like, stop dressing like that. Um, you know, I really want the audience to know that, um, it's really because I love God that I just really apply this to my life. Um, and yes, to answer your question, definitely. I was in college. So we all know 
you know, college stories, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually went to a private school. It was a Catholic school. So I was learning about religion, you know, since fifth grade. Um, and of course, with religion, not only was I learning it at school, I was learning it at home. So that was my lifestyle of knowing God, knowing how to protect my body, knowing how to present my body, all of that. I knew it all my life. Um, and got to college and um, I went to college out of state. So that whole popular growing up thing um, was out the door, right? They mm -hmm. like, you go to college, who are you, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. So I honestly, um, I say that to say that part right there, um, if a person is not accepting of God, setting them apart, they are, they are liable to stray. Um, and that was a hard thing for me to accept. I was like, I was going from a lot of people knowing me to being like a nobody. Mm. So it kind of, um, and I knew I wasn't a nobody. It was just because I was in a new environment, mm. I had to start all over again. So none of everything that I did back at home didn't matter. Um, so I said, okay, here's the rebranding time. So, um, of course, you know, uh, I'm, I would say I'm very introverted. So, but I do like to um, network and stuff. I do like to meet new people, see what's out in the world. Yeah. Um, so I used to go to like all the college events. I was at every event you could think of um, from uh, networking events, from career fairs to the block parties to the day parties. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't the day parties. <laughs> The day parties. Um, yeah. So, you know, every now and then we do. I'm not, you probably don't know this site, but it's the site called Fashion Nova. And um, I know about Fashion Nova. Oh, you I, know I, about I, Fashion Nova? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I am I got a, I got a whole wife in the house. I know about Fashion Nova. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. You <laughs> might see some packages here and there. Exactly. You know, and they, they have quality clothes, right? But I was on the side of the party dresses and like, you know, when you're trying to do you know be somewhere we're not supposed to be really so i you know every now and then i go oh it's a concert coming up um you know it's this day party coming up you know i'm trying to look cute i'm trying to look like a college girl <laughs> um so you know that whole thing got my nails done um but i'll tell you this the the, the clothes that i decided to buy from that website they were never like um like you know those dresses where it's like holes on the side stuff like that i was kind of one of them where it was like you wouldn't go in front of your grandma with that on, but you don't look like a hoe either. Like it was so, cause I knew better. Right. But then I still was trying to be like, I was trying to have that look of getting attention, but it was the wrong attention. Yeah. So um, yeah, in college, I definitely had my fair share. Um, I even look back on pictures today and I'm like, Lord, thank you. I don't dress like <laughs> Thank you. I don't dress like this because um, really like, even as a woman, like coming into my mid twenties, it's like, now it's really like present yourself as a woman, you know, like, and the clothes that I buy now, I buy a lot of like cardigans, sweaters, um, things that I don't really have to think about, like, oh, is this modest or not? You know, yeah. um, even my dresses, like I like to, you know, even if I do wear a tight dress, I'll probably like, um, you know, try to wear like a shawl to cover my shoulders or kind of have some modesty to it. Yeah. Um, but back to your question in college. Yes. And guess what? That popularity came right back. And that's that desperate energy, right. That I was saying mm -hmm. earlier where it was like, women know what's going to get the men, right. We know men don't always care about the quality of a woman. Men don't always care about our success. If we got degrees, we know if we lonely and we, we want to feel like, we the baddest girl walking. Let me put on a tight dress, you know, and especially if you're in college, you know, and then when you're in college, you care about followers and you care about likes. So then you get these, you know, that's when the poses come in. That's when you start presenting yourself online in a, in a dishonorable way. Um, and back to what I'm saying is I did get men and I actually um, got I got what I wanted from that loneliness, from that desperateness. I got a man, mm -hmm. but it wasn't a quality man. Mm -hmm. um, and not to say that that could never change. But at that moment, I got what I wanted. I got that desperate energy. I got the um, the consequence and the result of what I put out.
So to answer your question, yes. And now I'm coming back into my senses and reading my Bible, um, you know, because I definitely do want to be a wife. And um, it goes back, you know, it's going to go to another point later of being honorable, not only to myself, but to him as well. So, yes, yes, that is, that is so good. <laughs> this, this this is such a loaded episode. <laughs> I, I want to ask you real quick. What do you say to the women who say who have who have the mindset of a man shouldn't look at a woman in that kind of way? Like he he need to keep his eyes to himself, or I can dress, I can wear what I want to. That's my liberation. It, you know, he should uh, have more self control. He shouldn't be looking at me like that. What, mm -hmm. what say? Uh, I'm glad for that question too because um, April is actually Sexual Assault Awareness Month, mm. and I think your question ties into um, you know what this whole month is trying to bring awareness to is that you know I don't want to go too deep into you know that whole situation, but um, it's kind of like, and it's never like the woman's fault but the woman could be an influence right so um i want to say like anyone if we see a pile of money on the floor you know we're gonna be like oh that looks enticing right like <laughs> we're not gonna walk past the money um and i think even with one men it's like you know if it's a godly man that you know has the scales off his eyes and he's not blinded by the world and by lust he's probably gonna keep walking he's gonna be like i already know what she wants He's already, he's already hip, right? He already knows that this is a woman that um, he might be married to. So it's all kind of, it's all kind of men that will walk past that situation. But as mentioned before, you're going to attract what you put out. So it's like, if that money is on the floor and I like money, I'm greedy. I have no morals, right? I'm not even checking to see, right? Whose money it is. I'm not checking to see. Um, if somebody dropped it, Hey, did somebody drop this money? No, that, you know, some married women dress provocative. Um, and not all people have those morals of, Oh, let me be polite. Let me be considerate and ask who this is. Right. Let me see if this woman is taken. Let me see this. Right. Some men, you know how they say, like, man, what they say, uh, you know, you can be married or whatever, but a man's still going to shoot his shot if he sees something, right? It depends on his quality. It depends on his caliber of a man. Um, same goes for women. Um, so that thing of, you know, a, a man should control himself. Yes, a man, there's no excuse for a man, you know, a woman could be naked, but that's not his body to touch if that's not his wife. Right. So um I think that, you know, how they have this thing. I've seen videos where women are like, they'll turn around and be like, roll their eyes or be mm -hmm. irritated, you know, by a man approaching them. And it's like, you know what they say? Even Rick Ross got a song looking like a bag of money, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> you looking enticing, you yeah. looking like, you know, you looking like something I want. And that desperate energy is going to tie into so many points tonight, but that desperate energy is always going to get you what you want. Mm -hmm. And not even to say that person's desperate, but that man, yes, be liable because, you know, right is right and wrong is wrong. But um, that man sees what he likes and the girl might be available. Who knows? When you walk on the street, you know, prostitute, you might, who you know, you don't know what that woman does. You don't know what she's down for, you know, and a lot of women get offended, but it's like, look. I mean, I know for me, if I'm out dressing like Queen Elizabeth, a man better approach me a certain way, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> but I really can't roll my eyes if I'm out with a bikini walking on, you know, not the boardwalk, not the beach. <laughs> if I'm walking in the middle of Alaska with a bikini on, it don't, you know, you're not in the right place for what you're wearing. Gotcha. For sure. The next point you made was a hunting mindset is triggered and activated, preventing the woman from fully relaxing into her feminine flow. Mm -hmm. That's heavy. Yes. Let's talk about um, that. Yes. So with that one, uh, kind of what I mentioned earlier, the woman with the flowy dress, um, I think of like at dinner, right? So um, if a woman, say a dress is too tight and she just like, you know, she can't sit right. She always got to move. Like, you know, she really can't 
the the men can't stop looking at her boobs, you know, <laughs> while they trying to have conversation. Um, like even like um a shirt that I have on, like something like that would be um okay, mm-hmm. you know. So it's kind of like limiting the distractions for a man so that they can see you, right? Yes. So um yes, still being sexy, but just you know keeping it keeping the focus where the focus is supposed to be Mm -hmm. um and the reason why i say it's a woman can get out of her femininity is because um the there's this like i keep tying it back to this energy of like there's this energy that um a woman like yes you can be sexy but it's i shouldn't have to feel like i have to entice you like i i shouldn't have to feel like I have to be a Jezebel, mm-hmm. you know, to get you to have interest in me, right? Mm-hmm. Like I shouldn't, um, I should be able to have good manners. I should be able to um, be kind. I should be able to be considerate. I should be able to be classy. Um, I should be able to be, um, let me see, um, speak correctly. Like there's so many different attributes of a woman that, you um, should be prioritized if not more than um the same as if not more than their outer appearance Mm -hmm. and that's what ties back into draining you know being taken out of your feminine flow because if you like i love to use like um even miss april mason i love watching her as well oh yeah and (laughs) yes and you know i mentioned michelle obama earlier yes but there's a certain poise that these women have right um and it allows when you when you are dressing modest and you're dressing with a covering over your body it allows for other parts of you to shine Mm. it takes away you know um the main attraction it takes away your body being the focus um and as i mentioned earlier your vocabulary like there's so many things that a woman a man and i I don't want to be objectified i don't want a man looking at me like all she is, you know, this is how we got this table, this question going around. What do you bring to the table? That should, you know, like that, this is why I listen some podcasts. Exactly why. Because a woman is it, right? Like a woman, and I'm not going to explain that. Like that's, that's the kind of man you attract when you, when you surround yourself. And that's another point that I made, but that's what you attract when you, that's the quality of men where their brain is at, where their mind is at they look at women as an object. Um, it's not, what do you bring to the table? I bring my order, you know, yes, men bring order, but women also bring order as well because we have the peace, we have the nurturing, we have building of the atmosphere that we bring, right? Mm-hmm. Um, our vocabulary, our kindness, our ability to raise, you know, children in the home, mm-hmm. our ability to um, be intelligent and lead careers, um, and just be a helpmate to our husband, right? Yeah. So all of that happens when I can sit across from a man on a date, you know, and he looks at me and he's able to see the brilliance of everything outside of, oh, you look good tonight, mm-hmm. if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. because the, the and the people that you're talking about, like you say, with April Mason and... uh Michelle Obama, mm-hmm. um, you know, classy women. So do you feel that with the mindset that you have, and I, I totally am in agreement with you, but do you think that there's a certain age that that light comes on? Like, mm-hmm. I don't want to be like, uh, you know, some of the hip hop women, you know, no shade, mm-hmm. but just, you know what I'm saying? Do mm-hmm. you feel like there's a certain age? Because you're almost like an anomaly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I got that before. <laughs> okay, yeah. And, and I'm saying that in the most respectful way. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're an anomaly. It's rare that coming across, you know, because you're educated, you know what I'm saying? You're beautiful, all these different things, but yet and still you carry yourself with, with class. So do you think that that just maybe comes with age? Maybe you got to be, mm. maybe what? No. Five or no? You Okay. No, because I, and I always tie back to God. It's like, when you don't, when you fear God and you want to please him, stuff is not going to make sense to you. Like disrespecting yourself is not going to make sense. It's, um, 
it's really that it's just and it's loving yourself so much where it's like I would never allow a man to look at me like a piece of meat like that's that's the mindset that I have you know and um it helped because I have a mother that respects herself Mm -hmm. um and I know you know I that's a blessing of mine not everybody has that um and I'm not saying I had the perfect childhood because I also didn't have a father so I tied into the desperate part, but I also knew right from wrong because I had a mother that, you know, I'm a woman. So she's my greatest example of how to carry herself. And I rarely ever saw my mom, probably never. um, And I'm not saying she dresses, you know, from head to toe covered, but I barely ever saw my mother um, wearing something where it was like, oh my goodness, mom, like, where are you going? Like she always, she always would even at the beach, I remember her having like a, a one piece bathing suit, you know, or um, just like her style. Like my mom is always having like a silk shirt and like some blouse pants, um, very business. And that's, that's who I am as well. So yeah, I think yeah. the business side really helps me too. Yeah. Um, but that I will say like, that's just been a blessing of just like me being a woman and having a mom that respects herself. Um, she always used to tell me like, match your undergarments right she used to always be like um if I used to have like you know she could see my bra strap from my from my tank she'd be like turn around go back in the house you know mm-hmm. change that yeah. and I had structure I had a mom that would never let me go outside looking crazy mm-hmm. um and even if you know I can't really speak for those who hadn't had that um you know loving structure growing up But um, I think another part comes in is I really like I'm a deep thinker on my life. And, you know, because we only get one life and I strategize my life. Mm -hmm. I literally um, I wouldn't say I kind of let go of that whole control thing. I kind of let go of, you know, um, this is how I want my life to look color for color, dot for dot. Like I literally loosened up. I used to be like that. (laughs) But um, the way, the reason why I mentioned strategy is because dressing provocatively has so many dangers, as we mentioned. Um, I never wanted to be like a baby mom. I just never did. I just, I just don't. Um, I want to be a wife, you know, and I'm okay with being set apart. I'm okay with not being to, you know, I think a lot of people are like be, having a baby mom and baby dad, like that's the new normal. And I had a, I always, I think as a woman, as a godly woman, as a woman that loves herself, you always have to remind yourself, you are going to be different. You're not going to be accepted. You're going to be the outcast. You know, you're going to be out there, you know, they're going to be at the party and you might be at home. Um, And I really, I think the older that I get, the more that I come to terms with that because I'm like, I'm not about to be 40, 50 years old, still living for other people, you know? Yeah still trying to have this persona um, of I'm an IG baddie, but I hate the way I present myself, you know, like I go to sleep at night disgusted with the way that I present myself online, you know, Mm -hmm. because I go to sleep every night. Like, thank God, like if my employer were to go to my Instagram, I wouldn't feel bad. Right. You know, like it's so many things um, that come out of just loving yourself. So I mentioned strategy and I really want to make sure that that's clear. Um, The dangers that, you know, the wrong men come when you dress a certain way. And if you're not strong enough to fight off that spirit, it could be a generational curse. It could Mm -hmm. be, you know, something in your family that is just trying to keep you down. It's trying to bring that same kind of guy reoccurring um, into your life. And it's like, if I'm not saying you have to go out here and wear silk every day, but just, look like a woman, right? Like even, I know like even in like a teenagers, we, you know, teenagers love to wear crop tops. I had my fair share, right? Of those days. Mm -hmm. Um, But thank God my mind, I knew in my mind that I'm not going to allow this, right? Like it was only so far that I would allow myself to make dumb decisions. Like Mm -hmm. I was just like, (laughs) you know, like it was a limit to this, right? It's levels. And I was like, you 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 went to this level but you're not gonna go further right um and I just love the way I feel like the way that I when I carry myself um with poise and I carry myself um 
I love like my whole closet now is like mainly silk garments because I just it feels like queenish, you know, like I'm I'm not about to be going out with no crop top. Like that's just not that's not me no more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. I hear you. It's you know, and because you know, being a younger generation, it's almost kind of like that's a thing. Like you mm -hmm. you almost gotta take your clothes off now. Cause I was gonna say, what is and I'm throwing on my air quotes, what about the nice girls? What about the fully dressed women, you know, who mm -hmm. love God? And it's just like sometimes I and I've seen where some women who even love God struggle with that. They're just like everybody's chasing the IG models and, uh, and, and those things. And, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm older, so maybe, you know, I'm probably coming from a different place, but yeah. I was huge on the classy woman. I've always loved classy women. Even, even when I was running the streets, mm. I liked classy women and I knew I had to step, I knew I had to step my game up because mm -hmm. I remember one time I tried to talk to this lady at the, at the store one day. I'm good. And she's a classy <laughs> woman. And I remember one time I tried to talk to her. She was like, boy, if you don't get away from me, I was like, yep. Yep. Yeah. And that's what I do now. I'd be like, yeah. yeah. If you looking like a dusty, like, no. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I, that's what comes back to the strategy because those kind of men bring trouble to your life. Mm. They bring drama, you know, they bring confusion, you know. And there's certain places I don't even go, right? Like, I don't. I don't even club no more. So it's no point in me having those club dresses because that's not even the environments that I be in, right? Yeah. If anything, I have blazers in my closet. I have um, dresses for church in my closet. Yeah. It's the environments that you're in that is probably going to entail the kind of closet that you have. So mm, totally agree. This is this is <laughs> really informative. The next one you said instead she would attract <laughs> males who objectify and demand uh, and demand dehumanize <laughs> her, uh, yep. <laughs> allowing her to be vulnerable to manipulation and exploitation. And we kind of talked about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was that was covered. Yes, I mm -hmm. mean just respecting yourself and not rolling your eyes when that dude that you attracted come your way. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then you said. This woman will subconsciously operate outside of her queen consciousness, leaving her more susceptible to clown behavior from others. That is, I hear R.C. Blake's in that all day. <laughs> That's where I got it from. I got a little bit from him. Because, <laughs> you know, it's funny. He loves calling people a clown. I'd be yeah. like, See? oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. I mean, he don't love it, but he tell it how it is. And I'm like. And that's the thing. But woman, if you if you delusional, you won't see him as a clown. And then we get mad when other people call it out. You dealing with a clown. And then we get defensive. He a king. No, he's a clown. You know, like your your man is when he really cares for you. And, and you know, we got this woman like, and man ain't gonna tell me what to what to wear and all that. First of all, I'm you know, sometimes we don't wake up on the right side of the bed. We something that we think is okay to wear outside might not really be okay. So yeah. sometimes we need the husband to be like. You know, you don't take it as a way as like it's your dad telling you to take it off. It's just of like it's it's a loving way. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of like women, you know, wearing crocs, how they got that whole thing. It's like just present yourself a certain way, right? Yeah. So yeah. sometimes it's the laziness, you know, that sometimes we don't always feel about feel like putting ourselves together. Mm -hmm. Um and not every day you have to go out and wear your heels. You might want to wear flats or something, but it's the presentation to it. Um but I don't know if you wanted me to touch on the clown behavior or not, but. Uh, <laughs> yes, but I, I wanted to say real quick, because I was listening to uh, my old pastor uh, back in Ohio, um, Dr. Vernon, and he said, uh, when you talked about dressing a certain way, he said, you, you could be in a store and you got on your your your, your SpongeBob pajamas uh, with your bonnet on your head. And he was like, you just literally walked past your husband because he was just like, he said, "You don't let SpongeBob get you out of your husband." Oh, <laughs> you know, and, and I know I see that a lot. And I love my sisters. On this isn't a bad session at all, but mm -hmm. I see that a lot. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of the, the sisters go out. They got their bonnet on, and you know, yeah, they, they going to get some eggs and bacon for their baby. I don't, yeah, know, but yeah. And you yeah. know what? So and you make a good point too, though. This might this might veer off a little bit, but I just had to say this. Yeah. Um, you know how they have this thing like don't look like you got money or don't look like you you know mm -hmm. and i do that thing sometimes too it's like i wouldn't say i'm high profile but yeah. i'll go out like there might be like 
you know, depending on where you live, depending on where you're going, like where you're traveling to, mm -hmm. you might present differently differently than what you really present yourself. Yep. But, you know, there's still a standard. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I will speak for myself. Like if I'm going to like, you know, an area where it's like, you know, you know the difference between the suburbs, the suburban mm -hmm. area and then the, the hood area. Mm -hmm. um, I may not and, you know, both areas, I don't think it's really like, you know, you got to because, you know, both areas, good or bad, you can something can happen. Yeah. So I have my moments of using my discernment. Like, when should I be discreet? Um, when should I, you know, because it's certain it's certain places I'll go. Like, I don't want no man in this area hollering at me. Like, you, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like, you know where you at, you know, you about to walk past a club. It's all these dudes, you know, sometimes you can't control. Say you at the beach, you know, they got clubs on the boardwalk. Sometimes you can't control who's going to be in that area. But um, I do have my moments of just like, I just want to look chill today, you know? Yeah. And sometimes that's that's when the men really approach you um, when they see you in your natural element. <laughs> I, You know what? I heard a guy say uh, not too long ago, he said, the reason because uh, there was a panel of men and women and the ladies was, was like, why is it that men always try to holler at them when when they aren't looking their best? Mm. And a lot of guys said it was because they lack confidence. Men lack confidence. Mm. So if you're looking your best, he's not going to approach you. Mm. But if you got your SpongeBob two peas on with you know what I'm saying they might think you're one nice thing you know they might be like oh she's easy you know and yeah. I and you don't even gotta be pr provocative you might just look like you a regular girl yeah but as soon as you come out with your trench coat pulling up in a bins you yeah. know oh yep. she about her business so yep, easy. yep. <laughs> so you know you just got just gotta know and 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 to those who are listening and watching especially for my ladies this isn't anything against you know, we're just trying to help somebody out there because somebody got to give you the game. Yes. You know, somebody got to teach you because if you don't know, you will be 40 and 50 making the same mistakes and 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 nobody ever said anything to you. You know, yes. I'm, I'm glad for this conversation. You said the main girl vibe may awaken and make <clears throat> make genuine women uneasy. Heat. <laughs> yes. Um. It's this thing with women. I don't know if men have it, but it's this thing with women. You know, I guess men, when when they get all fly and fancy, they got this, you know, confidence that they have. But women, yeah. it's like we turn into competitors. We turn into, mm. I can take your man. You know, like we just turn ignorant. Mm. And um, back to what I was saying, everybody has morals. Um, and I would hate, like, there's a certain way, like, even a parent, I think as a woman, right, um, there might be a certain way that a woman dresses around their father, right, out of respect, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know, for their, um, I might have to put my hands down, <laughs> um, for their, you know, figure, their authoritative, authoritative figure in their life. And that goes into saying that, um, even with men, it's like, um, I mean, even with women, there's a certain respect in a way that you would have, like, you know, how you would dress around your sister's husband or how you would dress around. It's so much deeper than what a woman may think, right? It's so much, yes, you can be in that selfish, you know, I don't care. He got to control himself, but it's really a certain way that, you know, going around your pastor as a woman, you have to be respectful in front of his wife. I mean, even just him, you know, um, it's so much things that as a woman, like, you know, I would say, I can't really say it's natural because some women just have to have that um, nurturing and that um, they have to know the reason of like this whole covering my body thing. Because some women are like, I mean, I can be provocative, but I'm not easy. And that's not what we're saying. Mm. You know, it's all about respect for yourself, respect for others. It's both. Um, but as far as as far as the mean girl part, um, a lot of women that I notice, they'll get all dressed up and then they have this you can't sit with us kind of energy. Mm. You can't sit at the table. You know, I got red bottoms on. I have a 
a Mary dress, you know, I'm wearing Jessica Simpson, you know, it's, I think the thing with luxury and even you see it in these um, clothing, clothing, like luxury bands, brands nowadays, Chanel. Um, what are we hearing all the rap songs? Oh, I bought her Chanel. Yeah. I bought her Birkin, right? And then these women listen to it ties into so much. Listen to the lyrics that these women are saying in their songs. Um, they're aggressive, you know, how they got rat beef. It's so much. I'm so serious. Like it's so much. Mm-hmm. I think because I'm a deep thinker that I just everything connects for me. Like <laughs> I'll be behind the scenes, like looking at the game and like I'll be connecting dots. Mm-hmm. Um, and the energy is just so like um it's a difference. Like even in pictures, you can scroll on Instagram. And I mentioned, you can see the girl in a flowy dress. She's in the garden picking flowers, smiling. What do you see the girl with a tight dress on and a, and a red bottoms on? She in her picture, like straight face, you know, shoulder like this, right? Like we, you can see it in the picture. Um, and it's just like, that's, that's the energy in real life. Like I'm telling you, when I'm around those two women, it's a difference that I feel. And I don't think I'm the only one. Um, There's a certain kind of, and I think the reason why I mention that is because there's this like covering that, I don't think all women that dress provocative are comfortable doing it. Um, I think it's vulnerable for them. And I'll speak for myself. Even when I was dressing provocative, I don't, I was never comfortable. Mm. I was like, I was like, okay, I'm at this day party with booty shorts on and, you know, I look like a college girl. I'm fitting the criteria, but this, uh, look at the quality of men I'm around. Like, this is the men that like this stuff. Like, I just, I just started looking at the quality of my environment and, um, I wasn't really in like a loving space. I was in just like a, you know, competition type space like oh I got my lip gloss on you know you start uploading pictures captions be like you know fly us in the city right you know (laughs) there's a certain kind of energy that come with that yeah Yeah. and I noticed like even with me now that the way that I dress I really I rarely ever mention how you know sexy I am or how a lot of the things I mentioned when I post and I have like my blazer on, okay. it's like I'm posting my business Watch. or I'm posting. Um, Today was a beautiful day at church. I love the Lord and I'm smiling. Yeah. You don't see me in a sexy dress going to church like I love the Lord, you know, like <laughs> it's a certain energy that comes yeah. with that. So yeah. I hope that makes sense to you. Yeah, for sure. You said something earlier <laughs> about. Uh, dress in a certain way, being around me and, and uh, like I said, being around a pastor or, or, you know, your, your, your sister's husband, you know, stuff like that. I think that's almost like a lost, I won't say lost art, but I think that's almost kind of uh, something that's in the past, you know, cause I can go places, you know, with the homies or whoever, and they know we're over there kicking it and they just got on, whatever i'm just like okay like yeah okay yeah well, you know i don't know if it's that kind of try to steal your man energy or what i don't know but it's just like right i, I mean you got to be careful the woman too because not all women are faithful not all women are loyal and they you know i mean it's just the world right it's just life um they could really like your friend and not really like you right <laughs> you know so it's like i'm coming around you and it's like every time you know you know how boys, friends hang out and they playing the game, but the girl coming around, she got, you're not supposed to come out in the living room with booty shorts on, right? Like, hey, like, no. I know if my man had his friends over out of respect, especially from his wife, either way, I'm going, I'm not coming out with my nightgown on, right? I'm going to come out. I'm First of all, I'm going to be in the bathroom probably for like 30 minutes, making sure I come down, looking presentable, brush my teeth, you know, um, and I know like shorts are not optional when he has friends over, you know, certain attire is not an option and it's not me thinking too deeply. It's, it's, you have to think like that, you know? Um, I mean, I just can't imagine like a man just, yes, you know, when it's just you and your man, you got your house booty shorts. Okay. You got your slippers, you know, all of that is when it's, 
is y'all because you need to be comfortable in your space. But if I knew that, you know, a sibling, you know, I had one of my sister's husbands coming over, I got a whole different attire for that, you know? And um, we got to bring that back. I just think it's very respectful. I think it's showing another way to love your man, you know, being respectful and especially around his friends, you know, like um, not being an embarrassment, you know, like letting his friends know, not, not even make them feeling like they have a chance, not even making them feel like, you know, there's a divide between y'all. Like there's no, there's no entrance over here. And a way that you can reinforce that is the way that you look around his people. That is so good. Oh my God. Yeah. Cause you could be wearing something skimpy and, and, and you know, your homeboy thinking, Oh, they, they must've gotten to a fight. Cause she got on the yep. movie shorts and yep. we're over now, here I'm playing. Make, now I'm about to make a mad. Yep. <laughs> we're over and, here playing you know, 2k. Yep. <laughs> and that's the thing. It's like people pick up on that, you know? Yep. And, true. and even if that's not your intention, right. Even if you're not going out with, Oh, I'm about to make his friends mad. You, you, you just opened up the door to a devil. You really did. For real ah yeah we can stay on this all day <laughs> uh it's this yeah yeah we just talked about this it's disrespectful to the committed man in her life who loves her mm-hmm. we just talked about that and, and i also was thinking too like <clears throat> wearing the, that kind of attire especially online you take these provocative pictures and i'll be thinking i, I thought she had a man and she you know she got a whole bunch of comments she got she got five right. thousand comments, you know. And when, when, when did we normalize nakedness online? I'm like, I'm, I, I'm trying to trace. Like, I need a timeline of like the day, the time, the second. I don't know, because it's like, it's like I even saw this post of she mentioned her man, and yes, I looked at the quality of the man. Of course, it fits, you know. <laughs> um, I, you know, I don't like to say that people are clowns but clowns but rc blakes approved it so i'm like okay he said it so all right um yeah. let's say how it is a clown is not is going to tolerate that but a king a man that respects himself and is noble you gonna see like look at the people in positions in power their wife is an asset to them their wife knows this is the standard for our union this is how you're going to represent me there's no miscommunication. I love that. <laughs> yeah, cause you, yeah, because if you were a clown, yeah, you you doing some stuff online you shouldn't be doing. Right, and the whole you know, it just just because it's normalized don't mean that you should be doing it. It don't mean that it's right. That's right, because some people dysfunction is normal, right? Yep. Ah, <sighs> so good. Last but not least, you said seductive intentions, nurture pride, lust, jealousy, greed. You said the seven daily sins. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I hit those two, um, those three, pride, lust, and greed, um, all of them. I mean, think about the stories we have where men are killing women for being with other men. That's murder. We think that's lust, um, that's possession, that's greed, um, pride, it's all of it. I mean, these stories of, uh, I'm, you know, I'm sure it's probably still going on, unfortunately, but there was a time where women were outraged about Black men killing Black women. And um, it's a whole possession thing. It's a greed. It's a jealousy um, those are all the daily sins and, um, you know, bring, you know, how they say like men are emotional. Um, you know how they, now they, they say this thing where it's like the sassy ac- apocalypse. That's what, <laughs> yeah, the soft <laughs> guy heard that. yeah. The soft so guy. now, now the world is saying that men have a, we're in a sassy ac- apocalypse for men and it's okay for men to be emotional. Right. Yeah. But it's also like, you know how like a woman, a man knows, woman knows that a man can hit, can't hit, can hit them, but a woman going to do everything to make him mad. You know, it's like you, it's not okay, but also what you're doing is not okay either. Both of y'all are liable. Um, and with the whole, you know, lust, greed, I mean, 
corn, I should say, or, you know, what I'm talking about, or um, self-pleasure, all of that is lust. I mean, it ruins marriages because people are not, you know, we have so much access to um, online sexual images that there's no need for a subscription anywhere because you just, you, you just, it. right. You want Instagram and you, you follow on these pages, you follow on these girls. Um, and that's another thing that women should look for when they're dating. Like, look at the woman that the man is following. Um, because there was actually a guy that I was talking to and, you know, there's no regrets, uh, but I, it just came to confirm that that's what it is. Um, that a man who he follows, who he gives his attention to is a spirit that he's battling. So if you scroll on his Instagram and you go to his followers and he's following all provocative women, you know, you, if you're not a provocative woman, he, he might be using you for your placement in life, but his mindset is on objectification of a woman. Like that's where his mind is. Um, and the greed, I mean, you're just going to want more and more. Um, never going to be satisfied with one person. Um, you know, you're going to always want, you're going to compare your partner to the people that you see. You're going to be greedy. Um, and you're just going to be never fulfilled. It's always going to be um, this, this yearning for more. Um, and it's so much danger. Uh, you know, a man can get in a fight. He could be walking on the street, his woman naked, but he trying to show off a sexy woman where really he should have, you know, out of his love, you know, protect her. And a part of protecting your woman is making sure she's not going out half naked. Um, and that's a loving yourself as well. Um, I know men have this thing where it's like, I let my woman wear what she want. And it's like, my man need to tell me that, you know, like, I really don't want my man allowing me to go outside with a bra on. Like, I just don't want that. Um, and I think that's good structure. I think that's, um, what marriage, like w when you have a good perspective on their intention, um, of why they are instructing and why they are advising a certain thing, um, you'll be, you'll be more receptive to that advice. Um, so yeah, that just like a summary of that is really just, um, when you like a woman knows when she's being seductive, a woman knows when she's trying to be manipulative, a woman knows when she's dealing with a married man. And, you know, she knows all this. I mean, unless the man says he's not married, but a woman knows it's a it's a intention and it's also a spirit that is inside a woman. That's why they have Jezebel, Jezebel mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> something intentional where it's like this seduction is going to make him leave his wife. This seduction is going to make him have an affair and mess up his family. This seduction is going to make him so greedy and so in love with my body that he's going to mess up his finances because he's willing to pay for services, right? Wow. It's that so is. much. <laughs> wow. It's so much. I mean, it's a woman, a woman knows what she's doing and that's why we have these songs. Don't you know, don't give it up for a broke dude. Like, don't, you know, um, don't be, um, you know, you gotta, you gotta get me that Chanel bag or what we talking for. Like they know the services. Right. And it's like a man, when he has those scales on his eyes, um, I've even had stories. I've, I know stories about, um, a woman, you know, I wouldn't say that a man is possessive over his, uh, wife, but that is someone, you know, to become one. So yeah. that is something that um, he has the right to be, um, you know, feeling a kind of way, feeling um, infuriated by if a if a woman, if a man were to try to take their other, you know, significant other. But there's also this um, there's also this thing. Let's let's take it out of marriage, for example, where a man wants to have this player image and he has multiple women and he has H O E S, you know, he has all of them and he's trying to, you know, it's a part of his image, the chains. It's, it's a part of his personality, which I think is corny. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> um, let's take them. For example, 
we have people in the streets killing each other over women. And it is not because, um, you know, I love this woman to death, to, to, to death. No, this is my girl. This is, this is my possession. Right. And that's tricking. Like, that's like, you know, I'm never going to allow some man to look at me like I'm his possession, you know, like, and it's, and it all ties back into a woman respecting herself. Like it all ties back everything. Um, and then like the whole seductive thing is just like checking your heart, you know, like, um, you know, when you're dealing with some, a man that's married or when you're dealing with um, someone that told you that they just came out of like a sexual addi addiction, like really be considerate of, you know, the person, like, don't be a teaser, right? Don't be, um, like, just as a woman, I think it's polite. I think it's kind. Um, and there's even guys that I know that have liked me in the past, but I might have blocked them because I know they either were in a relationship or, you know, I saw them coming my way. And I think that's what's going to bless my marriage when I'm eventually married, because I'm putting that good stuff out there. Yep. Yep. So yes. Yeah. I can't expect to, be that home wrecker and then oh when you when it's your turn no because the home wrecker about to come on your front porch you know so you know it's just really like um just being a I think that's a part of being a classy woman is like respecting other women you know that so. is ah uh, yeah that's <laughs> and it's funny how you know we can be the home wrecker but we don't want nobody wrecking our home when it's yeah. when, when it's time for those seats to, to and i and i mentioned that i knew immediately i said i said i think this man might like me so and i see that he you know i don't even think he was married he just had like a family or something or you know whatever they had going on <laughs> but i saw that um it could be a door and it's like i'm not the type to be like smiling at some dude's face some girl's face and i know that they do you know is interested i'm the type where it's like i'm never going to i'm never going to be the reason in between y'all i'm never going to um think this man i'm that kind of girl like it's so much respect for yourself that you have to have as a woman as a woman in those situations um and then know that your blessing is also going to be returned when you're doing that putting that out there that's right Amen. <laughs> wow what a powerful <laughs> segment yeah. Imani, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you yes um so you all can reach me on instagram at money moon forever all one word um spell like money spell like moon smell like spell like forever um, and I say moon as the moon and the sun. So just so y'all know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, Money Moon Forever on Instagram. Um, that's like my more, I'm very business and also personal on there. So you get best of both worlds. Um, and yeah, I would love to converse with anyone um, that is, um, you know, need some, you guys can, I love to like be that example. I mean, I think that's really why I'm on social media is really just to show young girls, you know, even I know it's not always just young girls and maybe older women that just need to see like, it's a woman on social media that still have class and that are still beautiful. They're not lame, you know, um, you can really be popping, you can really be awesome and still carry yourself with integrity and grace. So I just try to be an example. Love it. I love it. <laughs> and then your your LinkedIn is is crazy. You got a crazy following on LinkedIn. I'm trying to get my LinkedIn game better. <laughs> yes. I heard a I heard a guy say uh he's he told he is talking to single women. He said uh he said don't check his Instagram account, check his uh LinkedIn account. You know what? And I, I've been saying that. I already knew that because I'm like, if you don't got a LinkedIn, you ain't somebody I need to be LinkedIn with. <laughs> Like I, I was funny because I actually I was again it goes back to the environments. Don't think you're gonna be in the sports bar and be like, hey, what's your LinkedIn? They might not even, you know, they, they don't know about it. <laughs> mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. you know, the environments that I'm in now, um, of course, networking event, they're gonna have a LinkedIn probably, but I go to like upscale lounges and stuff. Yeah. And I'll be like, you know, um, you don't LinkedIn at all? Because <laughs> you know, I'll just throw it out there. I don't really yeah. talk about, oh, what do you do? That might come up. But um, that's my form of social media when I'm dating. Mm. So, um, and I love it because you don't got to worry about the whole 50-50. He might be, you know, <laughs> the president of, I don't say the U.S. because we already know who that is. But 
he's he's big dog somewhere and yeah. you don't gotta you don't gotta worry about what's his pockets looking like you know he might be doing good so mm-hmm. <laughs> as a provider that's all we talk. we're not talking about you know being leeches or nothing just saying like leading the household that's all <laughs> yeah you, you don't you don't gave up you don't gave out some game <laughs> in, in, in the closing comments you closed i out met a guy i yeah. met a guy on um i met him at this restaurant and I looked up his LinkedIn. I'm in finance and he's in finance too. And I was like, look at that. You know, I saw all his credentials, you know, <laughs> saw where he worked. And uh, I got to tell y'all ladies, another thing, it's for your protection too, right? If a man got something to lose, he's not going to be crazy with you, you know? And I think that's really, I think that's the main, that's the most important. When you know that you're talking to a man that has something to lose and he's built himself, he's not going to move reckless. You know, um, you don't got to deal with, you know, that caliber of man when you already know you don't have to run it. Ba- well, yes, you might have to run a background check, but you, you know, you have a good idea because that whole Instagram thing, that don't really matter. I mean, yes, you know, you see in his face, oh, you know, he's handsome. But what what is his what is his quality in real life? And LinkedIn going to tell you. <laughs> You get a game right there. That's what's up. That's the price of admission right there. That's the um, nugget. That's the free gym. Yeah, right. For sure. <laughs> wow.